we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today, good sir? You know, we took a week off. Got a little bit of sun. Do I do I look? It's hard to tell because I'm back here in the chicken cooker. Do I do I do I look? Do I look any tanner at all? Any anything? <laughs> no. Uh, they said no. <laughs> well, on, only Austin said no. Austin doesn't speak for everybody. I, I, I'm just going to assume that's a medical joke and I'm not going to follow up on it. Um, <laughs> Kyle, uh, today. I will. Today, um, we're going to and this is going to stay under. I'm not going to make it its own brand. I think this will stay under the wasteland, but. We're going to introduce a new. I want to say, and uh, uh, this would be like a so like the Sloopcast is the show. This the sub show would be uh, Wasteland, and then like the sub sub show, or as Austin points out, you would call that a segment. That that would be the correct way of saying it. But I I don't I don't like saying things the correct way, so I'm going to say the sub sub show. Uh, we're going to call this Die on This Hill. Uh, Kyle and I, and and maybe in the future guests. Guests will bring their own. Um, we're going to introduce a topic that we know will be controversial and then defend it to the death. Sounds good. All right. All right. Recently, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in first. Is that, good, is that good with you, Kyle? Yes, sir. All right. Recently, um, the NCAA announced a change in the rules. Uh, the change in the rules was going to be to eliminate the clock stopping on a first down. Now, in college football, we're very used to one team scoring, there being 40 seconds left on the clock, and then everyone jumps on Twitter, left too much time on the clock. Everyone, everyone, they left too much time on the clock. Because we got real accustomed to just you can be able to string together a long drive at the end. Why? You get that first down, you get up there and you can clock the ball and not lose any time. And it just sort of led to the beautiful chaos that is college football. And now it's gone. Now, what does, why, why did the NCAA change this rule <clears throat> to quote unquote, shorten the games? Not so great for offenses that need a few possessions to get rolling. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, but but why make this change? They want to shorten the games. They want to shorten the games. Now, yeah, you, you, you would think they wouldn't want that because, you know, commercials and. Yeah, but the, all the games need to fit inside of a tidy television window. The, the noon games need to end in time for the 3.30 games to come on. The 3.30 games need to end in time to get the 8 o'clock games on. So how else, Kyle, could we possibly shorten a college football game? Gee, I don't know. Maybe, maybe get rid of some of the damn commercials. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe not go to commercial after kickoffs, especially but, for especially for how how much of a scoring, how much scoring has been going on in college football over the past 20 years here. Cut, I thought these off. were supposed to be hot takes. I'm getting I'm getting there, Austin. I'm setting up the problem that the hot take will be the solution. Yeah, cut, cut off, cut off the uh, the commercials between yeah. kickoff and the first play of offense. But, 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 but Kyle, we live, we live in a, we live in a capitalist society. They need to, they need to make their money. NBC, CBS. You guys in the chat, don't get ahead of me. ABC, CBS, NBC, ESPN. They just paid a ton of money for these TV contracts. I know what he's going to say. And honestly, not a hot take. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. 
You you see you see what happens when they change like a single color on the jerseys. Uh, so the the point here is that in order to in order to facilitate more commercials, because that's what they're not saying. They're not saying we're shortening the game so we could put in more commercials. What they do is they make the game too damn long with commercials and then say, oh, look, the games are going too long. And then they shrink the game time. They're continuing to disrupt the game, change the game in order to jam more commercials in. This is what's happening. And again, as I was saying, we live in a capitalist society, NBC, CBS, Fox, they need to make their money back. They paid all this money for the game rights. They, they need to make their money back. They need to make a profit. They need to keep the, uh, the stockholders happy. They need to pay Kirk Herb Street and everybody to, and, and Gus Johnson and everybody. So my question to you, is how on earth because i know i know you're a soccer guy kyle how many times um do, does a world league or maybe an epl an english premier league for everyone playing along at home how many times do those leave the game for commercials i mean mls you, you throw in pretty much any so any any soccer game yeah, but MLS cut, doesn't they make cut, any they cut money. To com they cut to commercial once the ball kicks off. They only go to commercial once. And, and that's twice, at halftime. Or maybe twice during halftime, Austin says. But point is, it's during halftime. Now, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the EPL makes plenty of money. For sure. I, in fact, I am, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere sometimes during the water breaks, but even, but the water breaks are typically only played when, you know, they play in the middle of a goddamn desert. Thank you. Corrupt ass FIFA. Um, I, last night, I, I don't know if this is still accurate, but I know at one point I saw a figure that basically said that, uh, Manchester United is the most valuable franchise in all of the world, most pop, uh, sports franchise in all of the world. At last I checked. Now, it seems to me that plenty of money can be made by not going to commercial. That's all I'm saying. So why, and, and I know people, especially with like EPL, England's version of the Cowboys. Yeah, basically. Yankees, Cowboys, Duke, Notre Dame fans. You don't need to pluralize that. Uh, Notre Dame fan. Uh, in shambles over that Man U statement. Now, they're also Man U fans. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and Lakers. Don't forget the Lakers. But they're also Man U fans. It's fine. Update man, you fell a shit ton. Listen, it was true at one time. It's fine. 19th now. Listen, it was it was true at one point. Point is, is that and I, and I know like EPL or. Or even the MLS, people will say, oh, my God, but look, the entire front of the jersey is a corporate logo. Isn't that gross? It is. It is gross. But is it grosser than changing the rules of your game to accommodate commercials? Changing the fundamental rules, changing the fundamental aspects of the game? They don't give a shit. People will still watch. But you'll like this product more. You will like this product more. How so? OK, how do we still make money? No more commercials. How do we still make money? Simple. Various. Oh, here, here's our updated rankings, rankings, Cowboys, then the Yankees, then the Knicks, then 
Real Madrid. Okay. Spanish soccer team. Uh is 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 fourth. They're they're still subscription services is not a bad answer to that, Zach. And by the way, will there will there be commercials on the Peacock games? Stay tuned. I don't know. Good um How on earth do we make this money back? How do we make sure that everyone's happy? How do we make sure Ohio State makes money? How do we make sure that NBC, Fox, CBS, they all make money? Uh, well, the, the way the way we've always done these things is that we just litter advertising all over the place. And I know that that's not that's not great. I bet my life earnings that Peacock Games will still have ads. I only ever had Peacock uh, for a few months once, and I don't remember. We'll, we'll see. Peacock is actually decent with ads. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. They might just make the games like free on Peacock, but then load them with ads because they're really just kind of suck. Listen, I don't think, listen, I'm just saying it right now. They're going to throw tons of ads into the Peacock games because they don't want people to know there's a better alternative out there. They don't want people to get used to how good the Peacock games are with less ads. They don't want people to see how short the game is if the Peacock games have less ads. Mark my words yep. on that. They'll, they'll still, they'll throw as much ad space into that as possible. All right, Jared. So, so what is your answer, solution? solution to the problem we're throwing ads all over the place and yes yes i'm sorry everyone that means also on the buckeye jerseys you'll see it on the thumbnail i'll throw i'll throw a couple of the pictures down here in the discord chat um here's here's denzel burke uh he's got a kerger logo and a honda logo right there on the jersey and, and i'm gonna lean into this part because i know this is the part people are gonna hate the most but like there's no reason why there's no reason why you cannot copy the EPL or whatever soccer league model. I don't really mind it. Listen, the NBA already did this and you know what? You didn't get any game back for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not horrible. Well, thank you. I, I did. I did my best. As, as far as Photoshop is concerned. <laughs> like the NBA already did this. There's all, I mean, the, the Goodyear logo on, on the, on the Jersey there is, is identical to what is currently on the Cavs Jersey. At least it was, I didn't watch any Cavs this year. I didn't have cable. I turned my cable off. Maybe it's still, it's on the Cavs Jersey. Point is, is that we need more advertisements in game. This replay brought to you by state farm. Oh, look there. You know how you have the first down marker on the field and it's just sort of projected onto the field with TV magic. Guess what? You're going to see a Honda logo there. Now you're going to have some, you're going to have some green or blue, whatever color they use, or maybe video boards right there on the sidelines. We're putting ads all over the damn place. And here's the thing I'm telling you, the ads all over the damn place are going to happen regardless. Let's at least get the game back before it happens. Let's wholesale jump into it before it just naturally happens. Like we're just really accustomed to the advertisements in the, in the net. Now we're real, we're real accustomed to the advertisements on the side of the coaches headphones now. By the way, this wouldn't even be the first time that we've seen corporate logos on player jerseys. We're already super accustomed to seeing a Nike logo on that jersey, aren't we? I mean, we hear we hear it sometimes. Um, or the bowl I, game logos. I'm 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 drawing I'm drawing a blank on exactly how Paul Keel says it, but any time that. Ohio State, what is it, like extra point or field goal? Is brought says, well, to that's, you by. that's another, that's, a, that's another, um, that's another, was it like another bag for, um, 
groceries oh, for every Kroger. sack sends ten dollars to the Ohio Food Bank or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, do do something like that. Which, by yeah. the way, Kroger, that's not near enough. I, I'm sorry, that's not near enough. But anyway, what does ten dollars buy you at Kroger right now? Jack shit. That's what it buys you. Yeah, but you can tip the self checkout now. <laughs> God, I, I no, I'm, I'm. Oh, don't send me down that path. Do not send me down that path. So yeah, I. We can yeah, make I, this money back. I can see that. I, I really, I really can see that. And I a think permanent advertising on the score bug, projected advertising onto the fields, video boards, or potentially just sort of blank green screen boards, on the you know, sort of along the walls. But won't they just do on the field advertising? But won't they just do the on the field with the gluttony of commercials because you know money? See, that's the thing. This is what I'm saying. All of this shit I'm saying is going to happen anyway. They're all of these ads. They're just going to sneak because they just sneak them in one at a time. All of this shit is happening anyway. It will happen anyway, so we might as well get something back for it. You might as well put some sort of advertisements on the on the like on the field or like right along the the sideline there, too. Yeah, there's no reason why literally. I mean, again, just watch an EPL game. Watch a World Cup game. They're projecting giant logos into the circle. Weren't they doing that at the World Cup this year where they were putting logos at center field? Mostly just betting websites. Y y yeah. I said midfield, didn't I? Or did I say did I say center field? But if I said I center. Did say center. My bad. You 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 hear what I'm saying though. And I, and I know that people will freak out simply at the idea and I'm going to scroll back up. Here's an Ohio state logo with corporate jerseys on it. Here's an Ohio state logo for the YouTube viewers down there in the discord chat with Ohio, with Ohio state logo with corporate logo or Ohio state jersey, with corporate logos on it. And like people freaked out when Ohio state came out with alternative jerseys, people freaked out when those alternative jerseys were black People will freak out about this to no end, but yet mm. no one bats an eye. I'm going to see now, now, now I'm going to turn into the Joker. You, you put a Goodyear logo on the Jersey and everyone loses their mind. Unless of course it's Goodyear presenting the Rose bowl, in which case no one gives a shit. We, you can put as long as the Goodyear logo also says Rose bowl on it. No one gives a shit. And by the way, and again, I'm going to, Jared, I don't think this is a hot take as you think it is. I think you don't understand how bad people would freak out if Ohio State had a Wendy's logo on their jersey September 3rd this year. What is it? September 3rd? Um, Twitter going to go crazy. Yeah, people would freak out. People would freak out hard if, if Ohio second. State came out second. If Ohio State came out, maybe it's just because I'm not 49 years old, but I don't care. Wendy's would be pretty <laughs> rough. Why? It's a Columbus company. Well, just because it's fast food? Do, 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 we, do we need something more prestigious? Oh, I'm sorry. I said Honda. Should I have said Mercedes? Would that make it better? Despite the fact that Honda employs how many freaking people in, in the state of Ohio? But does it need to be prestigious? Is Goodyear good enough? Mercedes more for the golf. Yeah, this is this is this yeah, is true. That is true. Needs to be roosters. Oh, by the way, one more thing about the logos before I let Kyle do his hot take. I did mandate on these, by the way, that they're single color logos. We didn't go crazy with it. These are single color logos. These are these are single runs on the screen. 
I just want to the- point out that I, I, and by the way, they do that in the NBA currently, where when but they I have think- the corporate logo on on the chest, that it's a it's a single color pass. I think one thing that Roosters doesn't have the money. I'd be for it too, but Roosters doesn't have the money. Yeah, if and if and when they do do that, Jared, they would not touch the Buckeye helmet. The helmet would not have any kind of. Um, I hate to point this on it. I hate to point this out to you, Kyle, but there's already a Rydell logo on it, and there's already a Big Ten logo on it. It. It, that is prime real estate. Uh, absolutely. But then you start putting Buckeye stickers over that then. And at the end of the year, you're not going to see whatever logo is on but it. That, that's what the little flap in the front and the little flap in the back is for. Where it currently says Big Ten on the front and Rydell on the back. Yeah, probably not going to get rid of Rydell, the one who, who actually makes the helmet. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm just saying what? It's it's right there. It's right there. A gold star Buckeye helmet. Gold star. I don't think I don't think <laughs> listen, I don't think Skyline could afford to get on the Ohio State helmet, let alone gold star. Yeah. All right. So I ran some numbers, Jared. I ran some numbers here. So my big take for Ohio State this year. Okay. Over the pat over the past since since um two thousand through the two thousand sixteen season, Ohio State's averaged more than forty one points per game and over four hundred and fifty yards per game. Okay. I think I so think far this just year, facts. Yep, yeah, th- those are facts. I think this year. Ohio State will not average forty yards in 500 yards per game. So I'm going to say that they're going to average yards. probably the the year that we thought was going to be um, the best year for Ohio State in terms of like what returning players Ohio State had and that they were just going to steamroll everybody. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was that was the year after that. I'm, I'm thinking of the 2015 year. In 2015, sure. yep, yeah. 2015, they averaged 35.7 points and 434 yards. I think this year we're going to see we're going to see numbers like that. Not like last year where it was 44 points, 490 yards. And then previous year, 45 points, 561 yards per game. We're, we're not going to see we're not going to see those kind of numbers this year. Uh, you know, it depends a lot a lot. So, I mean, all right. So, so far you're, you're saying below average and below average, Kyle, I'm just going to have to, I'm going to have to point this out. Not that hard, not that hard of a take to say below average. How bad of a drop off are you expecting? Well, definitely, definitely a, well, I mean that that's a ten point swing, ten points every game on average, less than last year. Okay. I mean last year you had have you seen that O line, Jared? I have. I have. That's what I'm that's kind of what I'm saying. That's is I, I think Kyle could have swung a little bit harder, is all I'm saying. That 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 is the worst other than the uh 2011 uh season which was bad <laughs> that was um that's we don't, the worst kyle, kyle we don't talk about 2011 yeah that's the worst <laughs> offensive offensive team that ohio states had um i went back as far as 2010 yeah you, which is cr- which is crazy to think because of you coming off of a national title and then <laughs> you come up with 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 that kind of year you would think that they would just steamroll all the other teams and they just they just didn't no not yeah. not bowser not bowserman bad no it's they're just not going to have like the dominance like expecting you're going to expect five about 500 yards a game 
we're, we're not going to see that this year. We're going to see 400, around 400 to 430 a game. And are you putting this mostly on the offensive line, which has not looked great per all reports? A lot, a lot of it on the offensive line, and then you have a you have a new quarterback, which you know I'd be love to be proven wrong. Which I mean, the last time, the last time Ohio State's had um, the last three times Ohio last three new Ohio State quarterbacks have started. Uh, one threw for fifty touchdowns, another for forty one touchdowns, and then the third for forty four touchdowns in a season in their first first well, year. Are you saying McCord won't hit 40 then? Is is that the mark? No, no. I, th- I think I think I think if McCord can throw for. If he can throw for more than 30. I think it would be good. Whoa. OK, OK, now 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 we're back on the bold train. You're are you, you're saying like. You'd be happy if he hit 30. I mean, not happy, happy, happy is not the right word there, but you, but where are you setting the over? What, what is your predicted touchdown total for McCord this year? I'd say it's 30, about 33 touchdowns to nine interceptions. That's that would be the worst quarterback performance in, in 10 years at Ohio state since 2016. Right, Actually, no. Yeah, well, it's hard to say because, like, in 2020, if you do touchdown to interception ratio, Justin Fields had the worst in the past what, 10 well, years. 2020 doesn't count for a lot of reasons. That's just that's a weird year. We don't, we're not counting I know. that. I know. But they would it would be the worst since uh, 2016 and 2015. Man. I, yes, I know there's too I know there's too many weapons, but it's that offense if you don't have a good offensive line really really protecting your your new quarterback here, they're they're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't pizza when you want a French fry. And don't French fry yes. when you want a pizza. Yes. All right. Now you're saying by the way. New quarterback, a completely rehashed offensive line, a new offensive court. Like we've all really downplayed Kevin Wilson leaving to your point. And I, and I get it. Like it's Ryan Day's offense. I get it. But. You're saying low 30s in the touchdowns, a 10 point drop off in average points per game. Kyle, where are you putting the win loss on this? Well, let's put up their schedule here, shall we? Oh boy. For all right, let's let's let's, <laughs> let's crack this nut. So a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the major sports um, media out here has Ohio State ten and a half wins for the season, which is I think typical for the past ten years. That's is a, yeah, ten and a ten and a half games. Um, Indiana, yeah. So I'm just going to say wins. Just no hesitation for me winning Indiana, Youngstown State, West Kentucky. Maryland, Purdue, was that five right there? I'm sorry, um, when Rutgers, when, Rutgers, when and where Michigan is that Purdue State, game? and um, and Minnesota. That's eight. That's eight games. Like just off the top of my head, just instant yes. When and where is the Purdue game? It is. It is at Purdue. It's middle of October. Do Do we have a kickoff on that yet? No, we only have two kickoffs times okay okay it's not it's not it's not end of it's not end of october it's not november it's middle of october 
you know, it's it's more the kickoff time I'm worried about. Okay. It's not it's not it's not the date, it's it's the it's the time. <laughs> so okay, so eight games. Eight games there leaving Notre Dame, Penn State, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Okay. Listen, I love Luke Fickle, but he's not Last year was one of the worst Wisconsin teams we've seen in a long time. He's not turning it's, that program it's around. It's funny because they they have they have the average or over under wins for Wisconsin set at nine. I mean, the Big Ten West is bad, and they play a shit schedule. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and let's let's not. Let's not like dive into the into the Wisconsin schedule. We are well, that's let's yeah, let's not let's yeah, not go let's say. not go another inception <laughs> level deep on this. Well, especially especially when they don't play Penn State or Michigan as well. Okay, yeah. okay, nine nine might sound reasonable then. Out of co- okay, fuck it. What's Wisconsin's out of conference? Buffalo, Georgia Southern, and Washington State. You see what I'm like. You see what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying. Like, yeah, okay, they have a nine win over under, but come on, they should. So I, I, I'm going to say, and they so, will lose one of those. Spike says. Okay, so I'm going to say yes, win over Wisconsin, and I'm going to say yes, win over Penn State. It is home. To Penn State, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna White say, Outs, say win that I one. forget I forget who, but Whiteout's been announced elsewhere. They they no, announced it's it. home. It's home. Oh, it's in Columbus this year. Okay. So not, by the way, ten- not Michigan. They're 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 not lining up. They're not lining up the. Uh, they're not lining up the whiteout against the big. They they got tired of everyone saying, "Oh, the whiteout's not that bad." Look, they 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 barely have a winning record, or they don't have a winning record, or something. They it's like, didn't yeah, because, at one point. Yeah, but it's just like they always they always play the toughest team on their schedule or on their home schedule anyway. For the whiteout, it shouldn't be a good record anyway. Doesn't matter. Cal, let's go through all the Penn State now. Okay. I wonder if they. Yeah, I wonder if they announced a wideout for, for twenty twenty three. I forget. Yet. I forget who, but they have. Okay. Kyle, Kyle, we're 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 five inception level deep. We are. Come come back out. <laughs> so, come back out. Come back out. Ohio. So State. that's that's um, what did I say? That was ten wins right there. That's ten wins. So you're saying ten and at at best, or excuse me, at at worst. I'd say 10 games at worst. Yes. So, but you're saying 10 and two is on the table. 10 and two I is, saw, I saw is Austin definitely in the chat. on the table. Yes. I saw Austin in the chat a while back saying nine and three. You know, definitely was, could see gonna, nine and three where it back Austin just, Austin. just shits the bed somewhere. But nine and three is definitely a little reach, but it's not it's not unreasonable though. I th- I think I think my bets would be ten and two this year. I I think everyone until being... until until this offensive line can prove me wrong. If the, think... if the offensive line is night and day better than what we're seeing right now. This team, this team can go undefeated. Period. Here, here, without without a good a offensive take. line, this is a ten and two, nine and three team. Even with all the talent they have on offense, on defense, you got to win in the trenches, and we saw that the past couple of years. Don't win in the trenches, you're not going to win. Ohio State's going to have maybe the best defensive line in the country this year. They'll have the best defensive line in the Big Ten. You, you got you got to prove it here in um, Week Four. You, you you go you go yeah, over. They don't need you, to. You go I over. Mean, you I'm go over. The, sure. Yeah, you go over a state to take on Notre Dame. There, you, you got to show up there. 
we saw, and I know it really didn't show up statistically for, for a number of reasons, but we saw a vast, impressive step forward for the defense last year. And I know they still gave up too many big plays and all of that, but it looked like a functioning defense last year where it hadn't under Combs. And I think another year in, the defense is going to be remarkably better. Furthermore, you have an insane wide receiving crew. I, if not, if not the best, they, Ohio State, I think has both the best starting three and two deep wide receiver rooms in the country. The running back room is insane. Absolutely insane. I know people are worried about Kyle McCord because of the spring game. And I can say, well, Justin Fields had a bad spring game and every look at everyone's bad spring games and everyone had bad first spring games. Haskins had a bad spring game before he started and yada, yada, yada. We can have those conversations. I am. I, I, I can't read that and talk. The point That's I'm fine. trying to make is, is that I, I, I believe, and I say I believe because we're talking about Ryan Day, or we're talking about Brian Hartline. If they didn't think that Kyle McCord could get it done, why weren't they at least talking to other quarterbacks? They went and got a quarter. They went and got a sixth year. They got a COVID quarterback out of the pack out of the Pac-12. That's what they did in the transfer report. We didn't even get rumblings or sniffs of them talking to a starting level quarterback in the transfer portal at any point. Not, not after the bowl games, not during the spring. Who was available? People. I'm not saying, uh, look at Bama. I'm not saying there anyone was, anyone out there was great. If anyone out there was great, they probably would have ended up at Bama. But um, the, the kid, um, I can't think of his name, from Vanderbilt last year was in the portal. He's pretty damn good. I like him a lot. Oh, uh, <laughs> Gangland. I love that you were just like, you're talking about the guy from Wake Forest. And you know what? You're right. I was talking about the guy from Wake Forest. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wake Forest. His name's San Hartman. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Get out of my head. Um, I, if, if, if Ohio State had called Sam Hartman, you think Sam Hartman picks up the phone? Because I think he does. And even if he decided to go someplace where he's a guaranteed starter, at least. You said good quarterback from Vanderbilt. Yeah, that that was probably. Yeah, that, that was a dead giveaway. Yeah, but McCord can be better than the transfer portal, but significantly worse than last year's Stroud. So there will be a drop off. There can be a drop off. Not, let's not say will. There can be a drop off. And by the way, if we're just talking about September, there will be a drop. There'll, there'll be a drop off in September. By the because again, people are already rewriting history. I heard him do it during the spring game. Well, C.J. Stroud was great right away. No, he was not. There are still people on certain message boards that will tell you that he was shadow benched. Which game was that against the Mac team? I've already forgotten. I don't care that he was shadow benched for uh, his FAU. I, whoever it was, I, I don't remember. It was, it was like the third or fourth game of his first season. Remember, he had a shoulder injury. He sat out a week. Akron. Still, Akron. It was it was a Mac team that, that will tell you that he was shadow benched. During the Akron over game. 300 yards in that game. Yes, he did. It was Akron. But there are people out there to tell you that's what happened. And then miraculously, but he looked bad too. It was his first start. Back off. The 
13 of 18. By the way, he was splitting reps in this game. Just say this. He was splitting reps in that game. He wasn't. He did start, but um, Miller received a lot of snaps as well. But yeah, 13 of 18, 319 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Yeah, Miller had uh, five for eight, 66 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions for Jack Miller. Does Jack Miller transfer if Kyle McCord's not that good? Does Ohio State not go after a starting level quarterback in the transfer portal if Kyle McCord's not that good? Listen. God, speaking of Jack Miller. <laughs> I know what. I saw the guess what the over under wins for Florida is this year. You still at Florida? Five, 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 five. It's easy to chance for portal and he's a quarterback. That's a legitimate question. It's five, five. All, All I'm saying, listen, I'm not my opinion. Not opinions I've read from well-connected people who were watching the spring practices and said that Kyle McCord looked good, although that's true. I mean, their schedule sucks this year, as in it is difficult. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that's true. Did, did they get a bad pull from the SEC West? Is that the current over-unders? Uh, out of one one place. Alabama at 10 and a half. I'm smashing that under hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. They're they're scrambling at quarterback right now. I I, I, I wanted to do deep dive into the SEC. This. The SEC West is kind of weak right now. Seems like everybody's leaving Ole Miss. Texas A&M's in shambles. I don't know. By SEC West standards, let me say that, because SEC West is, is fantastic. It's a fantastic division in, in football. But by SEC West standards, they're in shambles right now. Bama doesn't have a quarterback. Texas A&M feels like a dumpster fire. Like it almost doesn't feel ridiculous. Oh, oh people are Ohio State has two players out of Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss was supposed to get the 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 i forget his name but he was like the big wide receiver out of uh out of jackson state and then he just like nah i'm going to auburn instead auburn's getting a lot of kids out of the portal but that's sometimes bad as much bad news as it is good news auburn bag i i don't know if that's an autocorrect or not Texas A&M, yeah, they're, they're just the Texas A&M's a shambles program. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Uh, I forget. I forget Mississippi State even exists most years. Arkansas should just go back to the Big 12. Um, I. Yeah, there's a, there's been an unfortunate coaching change there, though. If, if you have forgotten uh, and unfortunate and unexpected coaching yeah, so change some, there. Um, yeah, so some interesting ones that I, I saw here. So um, actually, let's see. You want a hot we, take we, we that'll piss do, people off, Kyle? You want a hot take that'll piss some people we, we off? Can, we can do. We he can, was a bad person. We can, anyway. do, do, we can do a deeper dive it. into this in a, in a different um, in a different. I'll speak ill of the dead. Together. I'll speak ill of the dead. He was a bad person. Who is? Just move forward. Okay. Oh, I did find out when the uh, Penn State. They, White they, they only call you eccentric when you have money. Penn State's white out this this year, Jared. Yeah. Um, not Michigan. So that that leaves just one other game, and that is. Iowa. Ah, uh, okay. It's Iowa, Kyle. Yeah. He had to look it up. He, I he had, had to look it up. I don't keep update on Penn State news. <laughs> uh, we have a we have a fun episode planned for the first week of June. That's all I'm saying. 
First week of June. We got a fun episode planned. It's a fun episode. It will be. It'll be. It's a new yearly tradition that we're starting. I'm looking forward to it. I'm teasing it now because it should be fun. First, first week of June. First week of June. All right, Kyle. Um, so are you, I, I, your, your, your whole, your whole thing, Kyle, is that Ohio State's going to be, or at least the offense is going to be a disappointment this year. I'm going to throw this on the table to make sure we get like a real bold take from you. I want a nice, singular, fundamental, bold take from you. Does Ohio State lose three in a row in the one game that matters? Three. Oh, oh boy. As of May 21st here, as I'm recording it, yes. And it hurts me to say that. It really does. All right. There's your bold take. It there's really does hurt take. me to say that. Probably not the, all that bold. So Kyle is projecting a firing of day. You want to, you want to, you want to, you want a passing bold take for me? Even if they lose to Michigan this year, it's a mistake to fire Ryan Day. Yeah, who, there, who there's my gonna, bold take. No, they who, they could go get a coach. They could go get a coach. Yeah, who who are you gonna re, who are you gonna replace him with? Someone. It's it's Ohio State. They'll they can bring in someone. I'd be shocked. If they lost by less than you're you're being silly now. Michigan's gonna be very good this year. Look at the last yeah, it's they're I I I just don't see that. I Michigan's gonna be good this year. They're gonna be better this year than they were last year. I but I don't I don't share Kyle's pessimism about the season this year. I really don't. I think everyone's a little snake bit right now. You should be scared of Michigan, Zach. They're very good. They're good. Again, the 2024 Michigan team, excuse me, the 2023 Michigan team, the 2023 Michigan team will be the best Michigan team of the 20th century. You want another bold take? I'm just, I'm handing them out for free now. These are all bonus ones. Excuse me, 21st century. I always forget how that works. Um, can can we just can we just make an adjustment and just you know it's 20, 20, 20, uh, whatever. Their offensive line is monstrous. They're bringing back amazing running backs. They are still a little weak in the wide receivers, uh, but their quarterback play will be much better. Their defense will be really good. Um, yeah, but we have DBs now. Uh-huh. We also have a rejuvenated defensive line of guys who are both older um, and hopefully, in, in the case of our defensive tackles, healthier. But a ter we don't know that the offensive line is terrible. I think the interior of the offensive line is good and we have questions at tackle. We've brought in a guy to... Otherwise, uh, they don't bring in Simmons. Oh, I'm... 100%. But they got Simmons. And I'm not saying Simmons is like the answer. I'm not saying that. But they went and Donovan Jackson, our only good offensive lineman, I said it. He's our only proven do i want to say that he's he's he definitely should be the leader on the offensive line right now I'll, that's for sure i think that they figure it out i think that they figure it out and i'm not saying it's going to be as good as last year's offensive line because it's not going to be you're it's going to be a step Correct. backwards from the offensive line last year that, and, and that's why and that's why I kept thinking or kept saying that you're you're not going to see average of 500 yards a game this year. You're just you're not. 
I think I think that you see a different offense this year. I think there'll be more tight ends on the field this year uh, to help make up for the offensive line. I think because Marvin Harrison is so dirty good that you can get away with maybe having less wide receivers on the field. Um, and also just Marvin Harrison's a goddamn cheat code. Mm -hmm. And by the, you're going to have Evan Pryor back. We're going to see what Evan Pryor can do. You're going to have Henderson healthy. Again, the offensive line is going to take a step back this year. There's not a Paris Johnson Jr. in the transfer portal just waiting for Ohio State to pick him up. He's not there. They're going to take a step back on the offensive line this year. But you can accommodate for that. And you don't want to accommodate for that because if you accommodate for that, you're taking a resource away from here and putting it here. So now you don't have the resource out there. But it can be accommodated for. But this is why you this is why you pay your offensive coordinators. And the defense should help make up for an offense that will struggle early. And by the way, let's go ahead and point this out. One of the worst offensive lines I've ever seen play at Ohio State was September 2014. September 2014. Did I say 20 twice? It was bad. Remember that Virginia Tech game? Yeah, 20, 2014. 2014. Even Navy was bad. Yes, it was. A t they can get better as the season goes. I'm just saying, survive September. Get beat yourself some cupcakes, survive Notre Dame, figure it out from there. And the defense will be improved enough. And I think the defense will be damn good. Improved enough was last year. Last year we talked about improved enough. Year number two, damn good. This is going to be a damn good defense this year. 100% that. 100% that. This is going to be a goddamn good defense this year. And that will help make up for early and, you know, down the road struggles from the offensive line because it won't ever be great. This offensive line, as it's currently made up, won't ever be great, but we don't need it to be great. We need it to be good enough. And I think it can be good enough. And I'm glad we play Michigan in November. <laughs> be more concerned if it was in September. Yep. Does McCord lead us to a natty? I'm not going to say no. The third year players on this team are insane. The true juniors on this team. I'll you Kyle, one one more bold take as we go out. All right. The 2020 recruiting class might be one of the best Ohio State recruiting classes. And I need to be bold. Top two recruiting classes at Ohio State in the in the online recruiting era, which essentially means since the year 2000. The the 20 was it 2012? I believe it was the 2012 year is hard to beat. Um. But yeah, I, I, the 2020 recruiting class will at least be in the top two recruiting classes at Ohio State in the online recruiting era. See second Ohio statement. Oh, so second Ohio statement. We'll see. We'll see. By the way, I'm not even counting the fact that Ewers is in that class. I remove him from the class. I still say this. I'm not even counting Ewers 
in, in, in involvement in that recruiting class because he wasn't ever he was a he's a reclass anyway he was a, he was a reclassification anyway he's barely on campus i don't count him yeah that 2012 season's the one with that one that leading joey that bosa was, was noah spence oh man can you imagine if you had Noah Spence and Joey Bosa? Um, that's, you're thinking 2013. 2013 is the class. Uh, I was thinking. 2013 is the one with Von I, Bell. Yeah, 2013. Marshall, Bosa. I said Apple, 2012. Zeke. I meant 2013. I meant 2013. That's the one I meant. God damn. Yeah, looking at this class. Yeah. It's insane. It's actually insane, that class. All right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the show. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, <laughs> uh, no is an acceptable answer because we're running long. How, how much How much shit would Ohio State get if they brought on an assistant coach who, um, Oh, who had some Lord. very suspicious activities on social media that would attract a lot of social that would attract a lot of attention in the wrong way. I'm I'm just gonna say what I said on the Discord server and then walk away from this before I get myself in trouble. One, don't hire an overt racist to to be uh, to be a head in your recruiting department. Two. Don't just don't hire an overt racist, period. Three. Bonus points. Don't hire an overt, an, an overt racist. To run your recruiting department. When half of your when when half of the athletes in that sport are black. 13 percent of Americans are black. 50% of college football athletes are black. Yeah. Disproportionate. So may, maybe don't, maybe don't go and, 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 and get a, an overt racist Twitter troll to run your department or your, or not, you know, wasn't the lead in the recruiting department, but was a person in the recruiting department just because you like this last name. Listen, take it from urban Meyer. Don't don't hire someone because of their grandpa. It, it's only going to get you in trouble. <laughs> the first item on their resume shouldn't be well. My grandpa was. Uh, the, the, the other thing that I have in my mind here, Jared. Do you think. And I'll, I'll just I'll just leave this question for you all here. Do you think within the next five years. Or actually, actually, do you think Ohio State will ever go back to grass turf or grass turf, grass field? I don't know. You're, you're starting to see a lot of um, football programs going back to grass right now to try to save a lot of ankles and knees from these uh, athletes. Do you see Ohio State doing that? Do we have him? Do we have like proper empirical evidence that again saying this to someone who's watched a lot of Pittsburgh games when that field gets fucked up, that's not good for your ankles or knees either. I mean, what was it? The the last Super Bowl, the field was terrible. And that was grass, too, wasn't that? That was grass that they just rolled in and it was it was garbage. That's what I'm saying. Like everyone's like, "Oh, go back to natural grass." Oh, that's the, the 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 fake stuff's not good for this, and the fake stuff's not good for that. I got news for you. What? It's and not the, other, the grass the thing, can be bad too. The other thing, and by too the is, way, especially, and this isn't necessarily an issue for Ohio State because they don't play that late in the season. That is when that mud freezes. Yes. You're gonna wish you were landing in rubber pellets. 
Yeah, I was just about to say, especially in that mid late November time and maybe December now, now that with college football playoffs expanding, that's, Valid point, not, Kyle. that's not a that's not a great field to play on if it's if that ground freezes. And Ohio and you put in grass, you're you're putting in grass. And if you're going to continue yeah. to expand the playoffs, you're going to need to put in heaters too. NFL fields nowadays have subterranean. Is that the correct terminology to use here? Subterranean heaters to prevent said frozen dirt from happening. Mm -hmm. People cherry pick data on grass versus turf always. Yeah. And, well, and, and the issue, you, you the wanna, issue and, too and you can you can agree or disagree with me on this gangland. You are um a training medical professional. Here's my thoughts on this. Players keep getting bigger. Their muscles keep getting bigger. They keep getting faster. The field is staying the same size. So in essence is shrinking, but you, and you can do a lot of things to, you can build your muscles to protect this and you can pr improve your flexibility to perfect that, protect that. But like your ligaments are your ligaments. So if you keep getting bigger and faster and stronger and everyone else keeps getting bigger and faster and stronger, but the ligaments keep staying the same size and the field keeps staying the same size. Something's going to give. And it's the ligaments. You keep bulking up all the chains around the ligaments, but the ligaments are still the ligaments. And I'm going to give gangland here to, you can't, and I don't know. I don't know how much, I don't know. Sudden stop. It's going to pop like a balloon. Yeah. I, I don't know how much of a factor it is too. Uh, maybe it's fine, but I mean, Ohio stadium is right next to a river. How, how much does that play into a fact of trying to, trying to maintain a good uh, grass quality field as well? If you have Ohio state's money, it shouldn't matter. Well, <laughs> so, so sometimes whatever sometimes the problem that is, they have the money to fix it. <laughs> sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, nature going to be. It, but Columbus's rivers aren't real. They're just okay. wide creeks. <laughs> we don't have barges or anything bigger than canoes in those fuckers for a reason. They're not real rivers. This isn't Pittsburgh. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll, I'll leave it at this that. Isn't, this isn't I'll, Cincinnati. I'll, I'll, I'll end it right there. I'll, I'll, I'll Columbus stop is right a there. fake city. Columbus is a fake city. I'm just going to sure, say dude. it. It sure, is. Dude. Oh, stop it. There, there, there's your hot take right there. No, 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 no. <laughs> this, this is a fact. Most cities in the East sprung up on ports. River ports, lake ports, ocean ports. This is how most cities on the eastern half of the United States naturally grew over time. In the West, it had more to do with railroads, whatever. But those at least naturally grew. Columbus was built artificially as the state capital of Ohio. They didn't want it to be all the way down in Cincinnati. They didn't want it to be all the way up in Cleveland. So they picked a spot in between the two and they said, this is the capital. And they artificially built built a city to be the state capital. This is just history. This isn't a hot take. This is, these are just facts. Columbus was not a naturally born city the way most East coast cities are. And a lot of the West coast cities were, it's just they railroads instead of waterways. This is, th these are just facts. These are not hot takes. These are just facts. Same for Indianapolis. I think you meant same. And yes, that's true. Same Indianapolis is also uh, so Indianapolis and Columbus are the same freaking city. It, the, it, Columbus and Indianapolis are the, is the Spider-Man meme. 100%. We're the same city. Oh yeah. I, I don't mind that we're artificial. I don't mind. It's an artificial city. All of our roads fit perfectly on a grid. Cause there's nothing to stop it. it makes you ever drive around in Pittsburgh you get over those rivers and those mountains real quick. All right. 
Kyle, that's the end of the show. Um, we did all the lots of state parks around Indy. We got lights. Lot. We have uh, our uh, the the park system in Columbus is amazing. I, I will say a lot of bad. I'll say a lot bad. I will say a lot bad about the city of Columbus. I really will. I have I've lived here for a long time. I have a lot of good things to say, and I got a lot of bad things to say. One, our public transit has to be the worst for a city our size in the entire country. Has to be the absolute worst for a city our size in the entire country. Code is awful, and it's all we got. Our state. I, th I think our, a lot of city. There, there's quite a few up and coming cities that are, that struggle like that too. We are the I mean, biggest. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say Raleigh uh, struggles with that too. It's just Ra Ra Raleigh's Raleigh's in a tough spot because it's actually three cities. Like, and the the road infrastructure is garbage. You, it you is. keep you keep you keep you keep saying that, or I keep hearing about like, oh, Columbus traffic is terrible. No, no, it's not. No, there, there's the the road infrastructure of how to traverse around Columbus is very good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> look yeah. At Ra look at Raleigh. That's one of the reasons see, why see we how, don't have a decent public transit. It. It's one of the reasons why we don't have a decent public transit system is because our road system is actually really nice. Mm. Um, but none of that changes the fact that we need, we need, we're the <laughs> Columbus is the biggest city in the United States without a rail system. Yeah. We're rambling hard. We're rambling yeah. hard, but all of this to say that our city parks are, are amazing. That's it. All right. Um, that's it. That's it for today's show. Um, tonight's ending music, uh, will be brought to you by, as I'm trying to find something, the dopamines, we'll do the dopamines punk band out of this queen city of Cincinnati. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen, local music, of course, watch your local podcasters. Once again, these are the dopamines. <laughs>